A lot of shit going down in my neighbourhood today. And we're just going to pretend it's not happening. And we're just going to bluster on through. Charge through like bulls through a gate. Mamma mia, here I go again. Welcome to today's episode of Behind the Streams, where I take you on a meandering wander through my brain. It's getting very scary in here. And through the landscape that created this week's post, which was called, Oh Mother, Where Art Thou? (laughs) Kind of weird that that's the second week in a row that I've, you know, borrowed inspiration from a Coen Brothers film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And may I just quietly say that between you and me, That is one of the best soundtracks out there. I generally refrain from speech during gustation. Amazing. Masterpiece. Love it. Have it on vinyl. Not to brag, but I'm totally bragging. Mother, mother. Mother's Day on Sunday, and I thought, well, it would be so easy just to write a post on Monday that was about how I miss my mother, who went off to watch cricket in another room about four years ago, much to my dismay. But it's all right, Ma. She's greatly missed. And I could have written a real tearjerker for Monday. Like, there would have been so many tears coming out of people's faces that sea levels would have risen and coastal houses would have fallen into the sea and there would have been frenzied ark building and two-by-twoing of animals and just so many Kleenex used for dabbing of tears. I get it. We all get it. And just, oh, waterworks everywhere. But I spared you. That's too much power for me to wield. I have the power. I digress. I decided rather than uh, subject you to what would have been an absolute slave fest of emotion for Mother's Day or the day after Mother's Day, I thought I'd write a more generic, you know, Light-hearted, no, it's not light-hearted, uh, piece just about what mother is. It's the who, what, where, when and why of mother. Just the questions themselves, who is mother, what is mother, etc., etc. I thought about making them declarative rather than questions, like what is mother? But then I thought that would just make me look like I didn't know anything about punctuation or grammar. It would make me look dumb. I'm dumb with a lot of things, but that I, I'm okay at that. So I ended up using them as questions. Mother, do you think you like the song? Starts off with the who. I really launched out of the gate with like mothers, basically. We're talking magicians and wizards. And I was talking with my brother about mum's recipes. I don't know where they came from. And I don't know where they went because they didn't come to my brother and I. There's a CWA cookbook somewhere that I can see clearly in my mind with tattered pages that she had probably from when she was first married. We don't know where that book went. Disappear. I'm getting off track already and we've just begun. Magicians and wizards, you know, what is that the secret source that mothers have that allow them to be able to like feed families when fridges are empty and it's like superpower that they have. I've written here, it's like threads of knowledge pulled from the richest fabrics of the galaxy. Mother, the warrior, the advocate, the judge, she's the one that gets between the lion and you, the child, that's who mother is. She's all these things. Mystery puzzle rhyme. That's mother. Magic and spells. This pool, this dark and bottomless oceanic chasm, there are fish with no eyes at the deepest parts of mother. To me, that's the most mysterious thing of all, you know. I knew my mother, but I did not know my mother at all, really. So the never someone, always mother. You don't think of mothers as being people when you're young. I think of you as my mother, not as a person. They're just mother. That's what I'm trying to get at there. Mother is the dull brunt of bearing our childish infidelities as we grow old and apart and away, always together and not. The idea of like our childish infidelities is that we, at the start, we're all about mum, love her. And then as the older we get, the more we grow away from her. We love other people. Not more. I'm not saying more. I'm just saying like our worlds expand to include more people. And uh, she has to just open herself up to letting you go. Mum, let it go. Mother is yearning at the end of an unanswered text. I got a lot of emails. Get my note. And I often was quite slow at answering them. I was just looking through a lot of her emails today to me and they were always like, Donna me, what are you doing? Give me a call. (laughs) Poor mum. 
always waiting for her wild and crazy daughter to get back to her. Get back to your mum. That's all she wants. My mama said- what is mother? Mother is title. Mother is role. You know, thinking about what society projects onto what it is to be mother. You're a terrible mother. I start talking about an ad campaign in the Cash Cow of Fear and Love and how like advertising preys on insecurities of mothers and worrying that they're doing things right. And it's really quite cruel. I am your mother. It's not enough that you're raising children. It's that you have to be able to like do it all. Soccer mom and great in the kitchen and looking after these kids and not being tired and having great skin and always being put together well and being at the local PNC. Do they have PNC in America? They probably don't. Motherhood on TV is always portrayed a certain way when I was growing up. Mothers had their shit together on TV when I was a kid. I do not enjoy being made to feel like an intrusion and an annoyance in my own son's life. Mother is a frustrated half in the moment of asking you to do the task for the 20th time. That is a direct reference to my mother and her frustration with this person here who didn't always react as quickly as perhaps mother desired. The weird thing is I always was going to do the thing. I was never quick enough. She was always telling me to walk faster when we were walking down the street. This is not a complaining session about my mother who I adored. And that is the conflict of mothers is like they are frustrated in one moment and then I'll go on to like, and then the kicking at the curb and sitting with to eat ice cream in the dirt with you and your pet rock. There are the moments of frustration, but then there's the moments of like just being your mum and like, oh, you want to sit here and pick at these rocks and dribble ice cream down your hand? I'll sit with you, whatever. Where is mother? Mother's everywhere, basically. Even when the physical presence isn't there. And I'm not saying this is everyone, by the way. I know some people have very uh, complicated relationships with their mother. But even if you have a bad relationship with your mother, I think she's always there. Maybe it's like having her in the back of your mind judging you or just the fact that she wasn't there that's annoying you. For me, I can often hear her when I'm doing something stupid. I can hear her very clearly in those moments. But then it's like I've got here the thumb on the cheek, the secret sweetie in the lunchbox. It's like, I don't know about anyone else, but there was a lot of time growing up that was just me and mum. My dad and brother would have known nothing about, you know, the little moments that my mum and I had together. Friends of mine know this story. When I was 15, I got hit by a car. That took a turn. Crossing the street. I'm from a farm. We don't do cities. When I say city, it would be town. And I was on a school excursion with the concert band and the orchestra. I played clarinet. <laughs> I'm quite versatile. I can play clarinet. They let us off to go get dinner. I'm 15. I'm in town. Now, you have to know, I grew up on a farm. I had never had Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'd never been into a Kentucky Fried Chicken. There was part of me that was just like, saw the bucket on the stick across the street. And I'm like, Kentucky Fried Chicken! Thirteen secret herbs and spices. I'm going to get me some of that. And it was dusk. I dart out. I looked. Don't get me wrong. I did look. And then I darted out and whack. Nailed by a car. Broke my leg. Let's not get into that. Mama told me not to come. Point being. This may have been two weeks later. I don't know. We went and saw a doctor just to check up on how the thing was going. And I think they put it in a new cast. And my mother takes me to Kentucky Fried Chicken because I never got Kentucky Fried Chicken. Not just my first time. I would say that was her first time too. And I remember we were sitting in Kentucky KFC. It was called Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was not called KFC back then. And she was sitting across from me and I was eating this chicken sandwich burger thing. I know the words aren't what the words would have been, but in my mind she just said to me, is it everything you dreamed of? What a woman. It was everything I dreamed on. Worth it. Totally worth it. Totally worth the broken leg and the scar that I have that I could show you right now. Bones came out the side of my leg, my ankle specifically. I dislocated it as well. This is a story for another time. Mother gathers up the hems of garments and comes flying into rooms, no questions. There's a mother alarm, like a bat signal. What are you doing to my kid? 
Get away from her, you bitch! When is mother? Mother is now, mother is later, mother is before. Before she was your mother, she was not mother. And then she was mother. And then she, the after, the later, she's technically not mother anymore because she's gone. But she is still mother to you. This is, uh, maybe we would have been better off going with the, the flood of tears. Mother is a fleeting thing that lives forever, even while disappearing from the air and the clouds and into the dust of our lives to be gradually stomped into no more with the footfalls of our constant amble. Life goes on. The footfalls of a constant amble. That is like, you know, mother has stopped, but you continue into your adulthood and the edges of her memory sort of get worn into the dust a bit more, but there's still the imprint of her there. Why is mother... When I originally started thinking about this, I was thinking about all of the instances of mother. I mean, the first thing that pops in is like Danzig. Mother. John Lennon's mother. Mother. Mother Nature's son. Mother Nature's son. I also thought of things like the mother that you have for making sourdough or kombucha or Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Mother Superior Jump the Gun, Mother Knows Best, Mother is a Word, Mother of Invention, Mother Has a Country and a Hood, Motherhood and a Milk, Mother's Milk and a Hen, Mother Hen and is the mother of all battles and dins and ruckuses and love. So just trying to think of all like the sayings that have mother in them. That's kind of where this whole thing started and there's only one paragraph right at the end where I talk about it. Mother is the why of our ethics and foundations. Mother is the why of it all. The single realisation at the moment of her last that we must go, we all must go. At some point, if your mother is still with you, she's going to go. I say this a lot. The older you get, the more real life is. And your mother passing, either of the parental units, like that is just... That's the stark moment of realisation that, you know, this is not a permanent thing. The day my mother died, February 1st, 2019, we knew she was going to pass. So we were with her in the hospital. And I, at the same time, was in the middle of doing a project called Speed Poetry. I used this website to generate a word for me every day. I had five minutes to write a poem about that word that it would suggest to me. The length of the poem only needed to be the length of this, however many lines were in the notebook. The goal was to do it as fast as possible. In my mind, it was about seeing if you could let your hand move faster than your brain was actually thinking, which is an impossibility, but the idea to go so fast that you're not judging anything that you're writing, it's just coming out of you. And because you have that word to direct you, it gives you at least something to frame things around. My mother passed on the morning of February 1st, 2019. I think at 10 o'clock that night, I wrote this right before I went to bed. So the word that I was given was fossil, and I thought it'd be just cool to read it. I don't, cool's not the right word. Here's the poem that I wrote on the day my mother died. But it's got nothing to do with that. Fossil. Worn down by the action of time, destroyed by thought and destiny, lingering in the bones of the earth, the bones sing to their audience. Longing to be touched by hands empowered, they wink their highlights in stereo. A spine arched along an okra floor, held in the jelly of mud made hard. They wait in perfect symphony, the position of timekeeper historian held scribbling notes on pages that may never be read by eyes that understand. All they can do is remember their role, twang the tunes of their whitened ribs or their immovable fronds to bend. The clock ticks, a pendulum swings, the destiny of their pages turned periodically by strangers. And then I would have closed the book and gone to bed on the day my mother died. God, I miss her. Anyway, I'm going to close it out there. I hope that if your mother is still around, you have a good relationship. If you don't have a good relationship with your mother, I hope you've made peace with it. If your mother is no longer amongst us, my condolences to you. May the memory be a blessing, which I always used to think that was the dumbest saying, but... I actually think it's a fantastic saying. May her memory be a blessing. And on that note, 
Until next we meet.